been monitoring different developments regarding security that raises questions, well, not just that of uh, uh, the one you saw in Adama, which we'll talk about in a moment, but there is that one as well in uh, Brno, the uh, JTF's commander's attack, uh, those who were killed, and you also have uh, some members who were kidnapped in Adamawa, so it just keeps raising more questions. But we've got, as you may have seen, there are two gentlemen here to share, uh, give us their perspective on the goings on. Dr. Dan Mo, he joins us on my studios in Abuja. He is a former special advisor, National Security Affairs. He served, that's to the National Security Advisor. He served under three successive governments. And then uh, we also do have here in Lagos, Dennis Amakwe, former director with the SSS. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on this morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, well, Mr. Amakwe, looking at, first of all, the one that played out in uh, Adama, the one we just saw about uh, the police. But, you know, the fact that residents first organized themselves, took to the streets and said, no, we won't accept this. This raises many questions. Well, they do say, well, it speaks to the security consciousness, first and foremost, of the people, how they're willing to put their foot down and then take it to the security themselves, holding them accountable in their own way. Does this, how does this, because I know the SSS may see things differently those days. What about now? Well, it's, uh, it's really unfortunate where we continue having these numbers of casualties. Um, uh, happening all around the country, uh, especially well in the Northeast. Um, we wanted uh, that order from the president that uh, you know the military should more concentrate on those areas that uh, uh, that is their statutory responsibility. Uh, we draw from the whole other areas and then go and concentrate. But uh, apparently, either they are shuffling their legs or they don't want to do it. You know because. Um, if they have gone out there, and then of course uh, these guys know that um, they are there, um, all these things will be deterred. But uh, we are having these things happening because, of course, uh, of course, the ungoverned spaces where there are no security uh, presence, and um, it's really very unfortunate. And then the terrain is a different kettle of fish entirely. But those ungoverned spaces, if the army were to pull out from those areas that describe as volatile spots, and then you have ungoverned spaces. Do you think the police is equipped enough to step into those areas? No, what we're saying is that the, uh, the army should, or the military should move into those volatile areas, and then leave the other areas internally, inside the country, to the police. And if the police, uh, the capacity of the police is not good enough, I think this is the right when, when time When do for we know? That is not good enough, is it? Uh, you know, they if, they, if they cannot handle it, because the IG is there, he should uh, fill the pulse of uh, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, agency and know that, yeah, we, we will not be able to handle this. Because it was after a security uh, uh, meeting with mm -hmm. the president. And I expected that if he feels that, okay, military are going to be pulled out, I will be left alone with NSCDC, but I will not be able to cope with it. Then, right there and then, you should ask, you know, can I hire more people? Can I train more people? Can I increase the capacity of my people to handle this But situation? do you think that will ever come, given, I mean, uh, uh, let me rephrase the question Chamberlain yeah. asked, you know, that if we'll ever hear that from the police, given that as soon as that announcement was made, the police themselves came out and said, we're ready. Yes, because they are playing to the gallery. You know, they are really playing to the gallery. And that's our problem in Nigeria. We, we don't do an assessment of the situation before we start coming out to talk. Because this is a very big problem. I expected, you know, the IG and some of his lieutenants there are very, very educated people, and I expected that they will sit down and really case this particular problem, and then know where they needed help and where, and then go to the president and say, come, we need some help for this order that you've just given to us. But, you say you are ready, okay, yeah. handle it, and there are problems. But isn't there a challenge? Because ideally, the Nigerian police should play the lead when it comes to internal security, basically. So this is ideal. This is what should be. So why do we have a challenge reverting to the ideal, as it were? Because we are not uh, planning. You know, you have to plan. Whatever you do, plan. 
See, that's what I was saying that, you know, some of the security agencies or, in fact, the law enforcement agency itself should start thinking corporately. You know, plan ahead. You don't just, like, pack people and pour them there and then say, okay, send uh, 3,000 mopos there. You know, that does not solve the problem. We want a serious plan on how to use human resources, how to use equipment, you know, to attack a particular problem. And well, that's, I think, the direction we should be going. Well, Dr. Mo, uh, looking at the entire developments, well, if you can look at, uh, at least from the recent developments, uh, this raises more concerns, actually. But, you know, whenever these kind of things happen, either those who have been killed with the border attack by Boko Haram, and then uh, internally residents themselves raising questions, perhaps asking questions of uh, police themselves, this sometimes does suggest that uh, the authorities don't have their finger on this one. But is this necessarily the case? Well, it is normally the case that whenever problems continue and persist and they are not addressed for a long time, you know, there tends to be some day, you know, dissatisfaction and disenchantment by the populace, and that is what we are beginning to see. The issue of insurgency, Boko Haram, kidnapping, and all this ought to have been addressed a long time ago. But the more it is delayed, the more you will see cynicism, disenchantment, and the feeling by the general public that the government is neither doing enough or not doing the right thing. I think that the greatest dangerous dimension it can get to is a situation where the general public are beginning to suspect that yeah, even, even the security agencies are becoming you know, reticent. They are becoming even, even involving. You can remember who they were demonstrating in the Adamawa case, where they said even the people there themselves were arrested, interrogated them, and they confessed that they are involved in, you know, in terrorist activities. And they even told them who some of their members were. And the civilians went there themselves, civilian task force, and arrested those ones and brought them to the police. And now they are complaining that they've been released without being charged to court. These kinds of things will help, you know, to, to, to really bring about, you know, you know, discontentment and disenchantment by the public. Now, what is needed really is what the, the president has started to do. You know, when issues like this come up, you have to deal with them very decisively. I've, I've just, I was watching the news clip from uh, Mr. President where he had directed the state governors to beef up their security operations and that he has even permitted, he would not permit them to even use drones. But the problem is that the state governors, we already know, have no security infrastructure in, on, on the ground. They do not even have a police. So these issues, we really need a more comprehensive approach because some of us have advocated for quite some time now that there is need now to give, to give the state governors some autonomy to have their own police force rather than allowing them to continue to rely on vigilante groups that are neither here nor there and are not properly well trained. So the security situation is becoming, getting to a magnitude where we cannot run away from the possibility that the president may wish. I need you to, to shed issue more light a, you know, a B on to the National Assembly immediately. Dr. To... Mo, just a moment. When you say yes. you advocate for the state governor uh, states to have more autonomy for security, what exactly do you mean? What I'm referring to here is that at this point, it should be possible to allow st state police. The state government should set up their own police you will realize that by the president telling them that they are free to use drones, who will operate the drones for the state governors or the state governments? If you allow them to beep up their security apparatus, you must also be prepared to send a bill to the National Assembly that will give them some autonomy to have the police. It's, a, it's half time now that the state governors should also contribute to the overall security, the state government, to the overall security of the nation. So that it's not just to depend on the federal government or the, or the central police. There is need, I believe, for the pres president to have quickly rushed a bill to the National Assembly that will alter the constitutional provisions, banning state governors from having their own security outfits. Rather than letting them organize the vigilantes and uh, this kind of thing, it is better to formalize it and authorize them to have state police so that there will be a national police and a state police so that they will be able to react more 
more urgently, more quickly, and more effectively to some of the security challenges that arise at the state level. But if they have to appeal to Abuja, appeal to uh, Inspector General of Police, and they have nothing at hand, allowing them the opportunity to use drone is, 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 is like, it, it's neither here nor there. Because who will operate the drones for them? Is it not the okay. same the, the, you know, uh, police force that we have now that we have to do that? So Dr. if Mo, let, we, let me, let, we let's kind quickly of... bring that back to, on that, still on that same topic, let's quickly bring this back to uh, Mr. Macri here in the studio with us. So this suggestion is not new. People have been talking about state police for a bit. But then uh, one concern that's been also popular in recent time is that insecurity has risen or occurs many times due to political interests. Marry that, this idea, this suggestion, with this idea of state police, which will also be governed by this uh, governors. You know, the man at um, uh, Abuja had said it all. Um, it's political interest. And that's why we don't have this state police. We still don't have the state police because... So he's suggesting that it should, it's, it's ripe now. Oh, yeah, it has been ripe since many years ago. We should have got state police in Nigeria. I don't know, but uh, because of this uh, political uh, uh, consideration, it has always been kept aside. Like I mentioned it here before. This particular government, especially in Lagos, was asking for state police seriously. And when they, when they came back at the federal level now, they've forgotten it. And it, it is so sad because we have been drumming that idea since some eight years ago that we need state police. Um, when you put uh, political consideration into all those things, uh, it, it becomes a fallacy because when you see... Um, uh, even some states now coming up with neighborhood watches, you know, uh, trying to rejuvenate and uh, their state state police. Uh, the, the ulterior motive, you don't know, you know. We are having a motekun right now uh, in the West and uh, unplanned. But because of the political, political issue or the political uh, uh, consideration, we are rushing into it without, uh, you know, getting it right. So these are the situations that we have to, on the table, we have to think about. I know, I know that there are various uh, regions of Nigeria that have their own pockets of uh, yeah. security apparatus and all of that. But if you remember the, the president's uh, speech of January, letter of January mm -hmm. 1, he said, uh, part of what he said is that the new Ministry of Police Affairs increased recruitment of officers and the security reforms being introduced will build on what we are already delivering. We work tirelessly at home and with our allies in support of our policies to protect the security of life and property. Do you see that as being real now? Even the national security strategy, you know, emphasized it, that we should build up human security. But I don't see the, uh, well, they are all in theory right now. We don't see the practical side of it. But, you know, what the one on the screen, what the president talking about, they've been fighting on several fronts. Many think that, well, perhaps he felt the pulse. So if they've been fighting on several fronts, he says, well, violent extremists, cultists, organized criminal networks, it's not been easy, but they are winning the war. And you can see that it goes on. Do you get that sense that we are winning this? Yes, we are winning the war, but we have not won the peace. Just okay. according to what the president himself said. Uh, we have not won the peace, and uh, we need to win the peace because the populace will not have an effect of winning the war so if there can is you no win the peace. peace winning the war? You cannot win the peace without winning the war. So, I, but you said you, you agree that we are winning the war earlier. Uh, because, uh, you know, to a large extent, you know, uh, Boko Haram actually has been restricted. They are not occupying or taking uh, caliphates anymore, creating caliphates anymore. Uh, the bandits themselves, you know, it, there was a time the curve was very high. But now all the, everything has gone down. We want to maintain that to make sure that it does not escalate more than what it is now. But uh, those are the wars we're winning, but not the peace. Well, Dr. Mo, it, it, part of what the president also said on that uh, New Year Day speech was that, quote, our security forces will receive the best training and modern weaponry 
and in turn will be held to the highest standards of professionalism and respect for human rights. We will use all the human and emerging technological resources available to tackle kidnapping, banditry, and armed robbery. But there are those who will interpret this as though, well, there doesn't seem to be uh, any need for state police here, because if they're saying that, look, yeah. they will receive the best of all of those trainings, from what he said, he even talked about the Ministry of Police Affairs, they will receive training, so paying attention, then the launch of that police command, does that suggest that they don't consider state police as top on that uh, scale of preference? No, I don't think the two are contradictory, as a matter of fact. It is, I, 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 I am happy that the president has decided to eject much more resources, much more training, and equip the police. But we are talking about the structural arrangement. We are running a federal system. And in fact, it's even in the interest of the federal government to allow the state some autonomy to have their own police. Because the money, monies are shared to the federal government, to the state government, to the local government. And the federal government alone does not even have enough money to be able to equip the police at the federal level. There are some effective state governors that can organize their own police. And because they know, they understand the system. You see, when you are talking about terrorism, you are talking about boundaries, you are talking about kidnapping. These are local, local crimes that the people in the community, in the villages, sometimes know these people. So if you allow them to have their own police, you will realize that they will link up much more with the traditional rulers. And then uh, it's not even a question of just increasing resources or even the sophistication of the resources. It's a question of methodology. How best do we, do we control security? And how best do we bring law and order in a federal arrangement? The best approach has always been that segment it and then allow coordination. That is the best approach. So it is over where I would, let me be very blunt with you. Until we give some states or the, all the states in the Federation some autonomy to handle the security situation, we will continue with this situation for a very long time. Because there are some effective governors that if we give them that kind of right, they will be able to stop the security challenge in their own states with the assistance of the federal government. I am not saying that once you give them that the police will be so autonomous that there will be no linkage between them and the federal police. No, no one is advocating that. We are in the same country, but to assume that somehow state governors will misuse the police for political and other reasons, why the federal government will not misuse the police for political and other reasons seems to me not correct in a federal arrangement. So that Dr. is why I'm this... thinking that this situation will, let me be frank, it, you can this situation that. will continue with us as long as we have not allowed state governors to also play a role in the security of their own states. State governors playing this role. While the debate about you know, state police continues, we have seen the Southwest governors coming up with the idea uh, of uh, Amotekun, which is meant to be a regional security outfit. And if you look at the front pages this morning, you will see you know, reports saying details are still sketchy for something meant to take off tomorrow, Thursday. And a lot of people are not seeing this exactly going too far. In fact, Mr. Marker in the studio has his reservations about this particular outfit. So what do you think about this? Do you think this is perhaps you know, the right step in the right direction while we plan for state police? You know, there have been three reasons why the issue of state police has been delayed. One is the political reason. The other one is that some states do not have enough resources to be able to handle state police. The president keeps saying, and I think correctly too, that some state governors cannot even pay salaries. So if you give them the responsibility of state police, what do they do now? So the, the tentative arrangements or the intermediary arrangement or having regional you know, you know, police will even be much better than what we have at the moment. I think what you see happening as in the, it will happen in the Southwest, they are planning on their own regional regional security arrangement. You know, if we cannot go to state police right away, at least let us move to the stage of regional police. I can assure you that until we move towards that kind of thing, it will be very difficult for us to control the security situation in the country. That is why I, I think that it is very important for us and for, for the federal government to meet with the state governors and maybe the Federal Executive Council or even the National Council of State and take decisions on this matter. Because the security situation is not something that will allow to continue in the country for a very long time. It's affecting all the other sectors of the economy. 
It is affecting foreign investment. It's affecting tourism. It's affecting the, the, the socioeconomic you know, variables. And you see that the performance is being affected very badly, despite the increases in the oil prices. So it is important that we, we tinker with this present arrangement. Even if we cannot go direct to state police, at least for God's sake, let us allow regional arrangement where there, there will be at least six regional uh, police forces to be able to uh, help the federal government and the national uh, police force in dealing with these matters. The issue here is that you need to know, have the people at the different levels. I remember that the states have different capabilities, and have different resources. There are even some cities in Nigeria today that should even be allowed to have their own police. For instance, why can't they do have a Lagos, a Lagos police? Because they have enough resources to sustain that. There are some big cities that can even have their own police. But I think that in the absence of state police, I think the best is what is happening in the, in the Southwest. The best is to have regional security arrangement. Because if you allow individuals or you allow bandits or, or you allow uh, you know, individuals to be risking their lives, arresting the kidnappers, arresting the terrorists, giving them to the police, and then they come back to complain that the police are releasing them, you realize that this, is, this will make things even worse in future. So that is why we are neither going forward or front. The president makes heroes, and then we are able to, to achieve significantly. But after a while, things go, go down. But the greatest thing I think also that the president has done now is to withdraw the military from other functions. That was the worst circumstance. If the military are to handle, let them be restricted to their own strictly military functions. And improve the police, give them more training, more resources, and more equipment to be able to handle the other aspects that are police duties. If okay, we are Dr. able Mo to do this properly, as the yeah. president has, uh, has directed now, you will see that the security situation will improve in the country. Okay. But to Dr. The Mo, thank you. Let, let, me, let me bring this again to uh, Mr. Macri. Uh, we've had different kinds of insecurity challenges over the past uh, you know, few years. Um, we've talked about kidnapping this morning. We've talked about Boko Haram attack this morning. And I, I don't know, is there a pattern that we are not looking at? For instance, there's been insurgencies, there's been communal clashes, there's been farmer herder clashes, there's been kidnapping, there's been armed robbery, there's been armed banditry and you know, all of that. Is there a common threat to these or that we are missing or that we are avoiding from an intelligence perspective? There is a common thread that, uh, you know, runs through all these insecurity issues. And uh, we are either shying away from addressing them or we are just allowing them to happen because we feel that uh, it satisfies either our political, you know, um, uh, uh, how do I put it? Our political aim or whatever, objective. Now, what is the concept of security? We have to look at that very well. What is the concept? Now, when you look at that, you find out that, okay, for law enforcement, for instance, uh, there are normally there will be thieves and uh, bandits and all kinds of people, burglars. And then you know, before, when, when, when law enforcement actually started, policemen were called cops. You know what cop mean? You know, constable on patrol. Constable on patrol, that's cop. You see two policemen walking down the street to the end and then walk back again. They are watching and listening and watching whether their criminals are around, you know. Then the criminals went into cars. And when they went into cars, like in Los Angeles, they started buying cars for the cops to pursue the criminals who are now inside cars. And right now, maybe we are forgetting, but the criminals have even moved away from the cars. They are in the cyberspace. So there must be skill sets of policemen who can crack crime in the cyberspace. But now, let's come back to our original uh, situation here. We have uh, criminals operating. We have a very big country which is not governed, many ungoverned spaces. That ungoverned spaces, that's where you don't have law enforcement people present. And now the ones that you have are very, very uh, restricted to the defensible space. Now, how do you increase that defensible space into the ungoverned spaces where they will take over and make sure that criminals don't have a field day? 
we have to think about that. And then we have to think of the methodology of how to do that. We cannot just be pumping them in there and, you know, failures, withdrawal, failures, withdrawal. No, that's not the proper way. So, Mr. Macri, do, you, do the security agencies actually feel the pulse of the people? Because for, for instance, residents in Adamawa to have gone to the police and said, listen, no, we've had enough of this. And then, yeah, we also do know that uh, the governor and that of Bruno will come to all of this, but the conduct of officials, men in uniform, and the citizens, do they actually sit back saying, look, people who put us here are watching us, so whether or not we perform, it will affect the men in uniform and the civilian relationship and confidence. Do they take all that into bear because the action seems to suggest otherwise? The, uh, the action might suggest otherwise, but they know. They are Nigerians. They live here. You know, they are very, very much aware of how the public feels. The police knows how people feel about them. You know, they can say the police is your friend, but also they know that the police is not your friend, or we are not the friend of the public. They themselves know, you know, and that is, that is something that they have to change. You see, that concept or that per uh, perception of the police as a friend or as a service to the public is lacking totally. And we cannot continue like this, I tell you, because now you've seen people now rising up and even uh, arresting uh, criminals, taking them to the police, and then they are being released. You heard what the governor said the other day, Boko Haram is killing people and you're here collecting one 1,000. You know, so these are things that are coming out to the public. We, you cannot suppress all those things yeah, all but, the time. But that part, I mean, many will say, look, this is what regular citizens face on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. The Southeast, they say, look, why do we have the area militarized? Almost several checkpoints yes. traveling. And then they tell you, you no, know, we're fighting cultism cultis on the streets and all of those things. So you can't fight it like that. You see, that, that's the same methodology we're talking about. The police high command should sit back and say, how do we fight this thing? Do we use undercover agents to go all over the place better? Or do we put policemen in cars to patrol around? Well, in Lagos, we've tried giving them a lot of vehicles. And that's one thing about Nigerian mentality. We believe that, yes, buying them vehicles is part of uh, solving the uh, security problem. That would be the last thing you buy for the police. Train them, train, training. You have to train them very well before. Okay. Uh, Dr. Dambo, uh, what, what kind of training would we be asking for for the police now, especially in the light of the example that we just uh, referenced in Adamawa State, given that uh, the people have now begun to make these kind of comments, how do we bridge the trust quotient that most certainly has been, has been breached as a result of uh, what the people believe is a collusion uh, between the police and some of the criminals? You know, the kind of training we need, there are three categories of crime now. You have the sophisticated crime, which has become internet and uh, you know, is transnational. You also have the intermediate crime, which you can put all this uh, kidnapping and all this into that category. Then you have the elementary crime or burglary and uh, personal issues like that. That is why when you have a national police that, that, and a sub-regional police uh, in arrangement, the national police should focus on the most sophisticated crime, develop their trainings in those areas. You will, the reason why the police are always calling on the army is that even at, the, at the, 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 the central police, which is the national police, which should focus on sophisticated crime, cannot do it. Because we do not have other police at the regional level or at the state level to address some of what quote unquote elementary crime of, 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 of. So the issue now is that you will discover that if we do not allow the central police to specialize in the most sophisticated crime, to be, which are now developing in our society fast because they are developing elsewhere in the world. The society has become so globalized. And then allow the some levels of other regional police or the state police, I can assure you that it will be very difficult to give police the kind of training they will require. Because you have to give them training based on the assignments you want to give to them. So if we have a national police of the kind, like we have the FBI in the US, for instance, their training is more sophisticated, more advanced. 
there are other ordinary police that you want to use them to go and arrest some local criminals. But if we jump everything together, there is no stratification. You have to stratify the training. The training that should be more sophisticated, so you will give to a certain, the national or the central police. Then there are other forms of police you can give to the regional police. So you have to have, in a federal arrangement, you must even have to federalize the level of sophistication of training of the police force. That is why I believe very strongly that when you allow for regional police, allow for state police, it will give room for the central police, the national police, to be able to train themselves in the most sophisticated areas. But if we just allow all police, uh, the federal, state, and local government to address the same levels of crime, and it's very difficult, even though it may not even have enough resources, to give all of them the kind of sophisticated training you require. So there must be some level of special the national central police, the regional police should be established right away. The state police should be established. And the central national police should be given more sophisticated training to show that they can handle national and, uh, crimes. And other elementary crimes like burglary, like maybe local kidnapping, should be handled by the state police. This is my view. And believe me, I believe very strongly that if we do not move towards this level, you, uh, you think that you can train. We have about 350,000 policemen now. Now, you have to have, if, if we have state police dealing with, quote unquote, elementary security and law and order issues, then you, can, you will be in a position to better train your national police to deal with the most sophisticated crimes that are coming in our society today. So even to be able to train the national police, you have to get, release them from some of the elementary crimes that the state police and the regional police could be handling. But if you don't do like that, every time you have an issue, you realize that the police cannot cope. So you are forced to bring in the military into internal operations rather than facing the most sophisticated issues of terrorists. You know, many people think that uh, kidnapping and terrorism are different. They are not different. You have four different types of, of terrorists. And any of this group, when they lack money, they lack food, they lack resources, can go and kidnap people. So it's not like Bogara, for instance, is involved in, in kidnapping. So you have the, the Islamic terrorists, the, you know, the Bogara Mao, that, that are also involved in kidnapping. You, ha, you, ha, you have the economic expansionist terrorists, the hastmen and all that, that also get involved in, in Dr. kidnapping. Dr. Moore, one quick people, one because before you go, and very briefly, too, because we need to wrap up on this one. While you were, you know, in okay, your former so position under three mm -hmm. successive governments, did you at any point in time advise any one of them that, that this may be the way to go in the future, eventually. You know, we were in a military arrangement. A military setting is a unitary setting. And under a unitary setting, they gave autonomy to the, to the military governors to be able to handle security situation. But in a democratic situation, you have to do it constitutionally. That is why it is not either the military was working because the military governor was also the chief executive and had also arms and the brigade right. was also in charge. The brigade commander was reporting to him. All right, the Dr. brigade Mo, commander, the commissioner of police, we hear you to quite them. all right. But I, I need to get Mr. Macri to, to respond to this one. I mean, do security agencies ever advise maybe the executive saying, Look, yes, we know that uh, we're here to advise you on certain things, but this matter about police or states having their own police, do they advise the executive that that may be the way to go or otherwise? Well, um, number one, they have to be convinced about that themselves. You know, uh, this is a new idea that is coming all over the place. But I know that uh, for the state security service, for instance, the intelligence report they write is an advice, you know, on the true situation of things, Devoid of politics and all the rest. Yeah, but are there recommendations? That of this oh, the definitely. The intelligence report is not just to tell you that this is going to happen or what. You know, you write the report and then, of course, you even put your own opinion at the end and then, of course, advise that this is the direction things could go. And then we advise that this be done. You so give it to the executive. They don't leave it to the interpretation of the executive, whether or not there should be state police or not. You don't have to interpret it again. That's intelligence. It's been given but to you. Now the, 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 the executive have to decide whether he wants to use it or not because he also has other variables coming right. into play like politics, ethnicity, religious, you know. 
affecting that particular report. But those recommendations, are they on a policy level or on a strategy level? I mean, did they go as high as saying, you know what, well, this is a policy we think should put, be put in place or we need more men, we need more equipment? They How are on a strategic level because the policy itself is taking, the policy is done by the executive. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Mr. Dennis Amakwe, former director with the SSS, and Dr. Dan Mo, also former security advisor to different uh, seven of three successive governments. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on.